I'll, I'll jump into a couple of things here. So first of all, we're going to, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to talk about Google tag manager, mm. uh, more specifically talking about how to set up a funnel. Um, and so just, just as an example, let's say you have on your website, you have a web form and this is a slightly longer web form. It has a couple of pages, right? Two pages, three pages, five pages, however long it might be. And you want to get a sense of, or the um, other example would be you have an e-commerce store and there's uh, you know, people add things to the cart and then they initiate checkout and then they abandon their cart and they come out, come back and they finish checkout multiple examples here, but if you want to see kind of how, how do people kind of progress through your website when there's kind of multiple steps, one tool that we use is Google tag manager so that we can actually track how far people get through that system, kind of being able to view the funnel as it were. So I'm just going to nice. share my screen here. And uh, you've actually had some real good success with um, figuring out um, uh, where people are dropping off, how we might optimize, you know, a, a funnel or a, a, a path through um, a, a form. Yep. Exactly. So, so the example here is we were working with a client and the original form was actually five pages long. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to maximize the screen here. Um, and what we were finding is that each step along the way, we, people kept dropping off and dropping off and dropping off because we were able to see, you know, how many steps did people actually complete? And so then that gave us useful information to go back to the client and say, Hey, look, this is a very long form. We're losing a lot of people that they're not making it to the end. We got to simplify this. So we ended up simplifying from five pages down to two. Mm -hmm. But what we did is we use this method here. And I know this looks a little bit messy, but I'll run through it. But okay. We but Sorry, just to interrupt, huh, just to interrupt. Um, but to be clear, the question was, yeah, of course, every time you have a multi-page form, you are going to get a certain level of drop-off. But do we really need a multi-page form? What's the minimum number of pages form? What's important for each one? Because sometimes some of those pages might have been super important because they pre-qualify the person. It's actually supposed to be a filter. But what you're able to do is to say, hey, here's where there's a steep drop off, do we want to change this? And the answer was in this particular case, yes. So anyways, continue. Resounding yes. Yeah. Um, so you can see the way we've set it up here in Google Tag Manager is we could see, again, it was multi-step and we could see, okay, first step is a little bit out of order here. Uh, we don't have the start one here, uh, but just imagine there, there's, another, um, there's another tag here for start. So when somebody starts the form, that's going to fire to Google Analytics and say, hey, Google Analytics, somebody started the form. Great. That was successful. That was gotcha. Success. Um, then when somebody completes page one, then this is going to fire again saying, all right, we've completed step one. So they started, we completed step one. And as they keep going through it, step two, step three, step four, and eventually when they finish. And then ultimately when there's a successful payment at the end, because they go through the wizard and then there's a payment page. And then when somebody successfully pays, um, that fires another trigger as well. So what we get at the end of that is we see this funnel. So let's say a hundred people started the form. And then from those hundred, 90 completed step one, and then 70 completed step two. And then by the time we've got down to step five, you know, 20 have completed step five. And then of that, you know, maybe one or two actually complete and make a purchase. Now we can kind of see what's where people are dropping off and we can say, hmm, this step in particular, a lot of people are dropping off here. Maybe we should take a look at that. Maybe there's, maybe there's a complicated question here. Maybe they have to go and they have to dig into their files and they have to dig out some complicated piece of information that's hard to find. Do we need to ask that here or could that be asked over the phone later? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, and, and I'll, you know, sometimes you want to go in the opposite direction. Like sometimes you do want to make that person, like everybody keeps talking about, um, you know, uh, quantities and you always want the numbers to go up and up and up as far as leads go or, or calls go. And the answer sometimes is actually, we'd like to reduce that because we are spending too much time with people that aren't qualified and I want to spend less time. And I also want to focus my dollars on people that are more qualified. So you can put bumps. You can try to slow down traffic. That can be part of it. So 
so in other words, um, okay, actually, you, you continue with this. There's a few thoughts I have, but I want you, I want you to, 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 to. Um, th this, that's what I got on this one. Okay. So there's a couple of thoughts that I have. One is, um, if you have a single page form and there's a, especially if there's a lot of information on it, consider breaking it into a multi-page form and then adding this. So then you start learning what information that you're asking for maybe um, uh, causes a pause, right? So you can, you can learn that. So that's one thing to do. If you have a multi, multi, multi-page form, look at this type of implementation so you can decide what can I actually take out if depending on what my objectives are. The other thing, and this is something that was brilliant about this, Arthur, you figured out what needed to go on page one. It was a change. Do you recall? Uh, make it really short. Very specifically, when you chose, you, you decided, you know what? Page one is going to be two questions. I'm going to ask maybe name and email. I can't remember what the two questions are, but very, very, very easy questions to answer you saw the success rate shoot way up. Right. So actually we, we could dive into that for a second. So a little, a little bit of psychology here. If you make, if you make that first page really, really super simple, like you said, name and email, right. Mm -hmm. And somebody completes that step. The person a has a certain sense of accomplishment of like, Hey, I, I finished step one, right. They're now invested because they, they finished step one. So, all right, well, probably going to finish step two. And then if they get to page two and it says, all right, this is now page two of two, they already have that feeling of like, well, step one was so easy. Almost done. Almost done. May it, let's just finish up step two. We're almost there. It's funny because, and, and, and we actually added a, uh, uh, you know, people have seen this, the, the, the steps, you know, you're, you're one fifth of the way through. The you're tracking, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but part of our minds to a certain degree, and this is on average across, oh, God, I hate sitting on my hands. This is on average across many different um, people, right? So some people won't respond to this. Some people will. Um, to a certain degree, it feels like you're 50% done. Even if, you know, there's 10 questions and you've only answered two. All right. So, um, all right, cool. Uh, I think we're probably out of time.